victims. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has explained in a lot of detail and with great, great clarity the events that will occur in every person's life that will talk, that will signal death and the journey that the soul will take as it experiences this phenomenon of death. The very first sign of death is what the Prophet ﷺ called Sakaratul Maut. And Allah mentions it in the Quran as well. Wajaat Sakaratul Mauti bil Haq. And Sakaratul Maut means the pangs of death. It means the pangs of death. And these Sakarat, they signal a type of suffering, a type of pain. That is something that is very unbearable. Our Prophet ﷺ himself suffered it before he passed away. And Aisha narrates that he, she visited or she entered the, the room of the Prophet ﷺ and he was tossing and turning in his bed and he was sweating profusely and he was rubbing the sweat from his forehead and he said, Ala inna lil mawti sakarat, ala inna lil mawti sakarat. That verily, death has these pangs, death has these pangs. And these pangs are not a sign of evil at all. Our Prophet ﷺ suffered them. They are simply the precursor, the common precursor to the eventual coming of the angel of death. And the angel of death's coming, when the person sees the angel of death, our Prophet ﷺ told us that there will be this millisecond where you are still alive and you see the angel of death in front of you. You are a part and parcel of this world. You are still a part of this dunya, but the angel of death is there and only you can see it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that this will happen where جَاءَ السَّكْرَةُ وَرَدِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَعِيدٍ That this is something you were running away from. لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ هَذَا Allah says, you were attempting to deny this. You were ignoring this. You were غَافِلْ about this. And then Allah says that today, كَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٍ Today when you see the angel of death, we have lifted the covering. You will see the real world and that is the next life. كَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ And today your eyesight, it is as if al hadid here means it is very clear, you will see everything. So when the angel of death is seen and you are still on this earth, the Prophet ﷺ said that is when tawbah is cut off. There is no tawbah when you see the angel of death. That is when the, the, the repentance and all hope of salvation is finished. If you were not righteous before, you're not going to be righteous now. And this soul, this angel of death will take your soul. And our Prophet ﷺ said that when the ruh leaves the body, the eyes follow the ruh up. The hadith is in uh, Muslim Imam Ahmad, it's authentic. That when the ruh leaves the body, the eyes follow it up. And that is why our Prophet ﷺ said, every dead person, his eyes are looking up. This is a phenomenon we know from real world. Every person who dies, his eyes are looking straight up. Why? Because Allah has allowed us as individual human beings to see our own ruh. We see our own ruh as it leaves our body. And we see it go up and our eyes follow it. And that is when death comes to us. And this is a reality that we know and we experience and we see around us. And the process of death, it is at the time of death that the righteous and the evil, their difference is put. The righteous's death will be different than the person who was a fasiq and a fajr. Our Prophet ﷺ told us that for the mu'min, when his time of death comes, the angels of death all come with their entourage. They come with a delegation, a welcoming committee. And Allah refers to this in the Quran. That those who said Allah is our Lord, and they were firm in this statement. The angels will all come down to tanazzal, meaning in hordes, in armies, they will all come down. And these angels, the Prophet ﷺ told us, they will be as far as the eye can see. And they will have bright faces, shining faces, faces that bring comfort, faces that bring peace. And the person is seeing this right at the last millisecond of his life. And he is terrified. Everyone's going to be terrified. What will the angel say at this time? Don't be worried and don't be scared. Don't be worried about what you're going to face in the future. Don't be scared about your family and children you left behind. We are your protectors. We will take care of you. In 
this world and in the next. We'll take care of your family and we'll take care of you. This is something that will happen to the believers. That the believers will see as far as the eye can see beautiful angels calming them down, consoling them. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, and his ruh will leave his body like water is poured out of a jug. Look at how beautifully the water comes out. It will leave simply, it will leave beautifully, poetically even. And the angels, the Prophet ﷺ said, will handle his ruh with the utmost gentleness and the utmost care. And they will bring with them the shrouds of Jannah and the flowers of Jannah and the perfumes of Jannah. And they will shroud the ruh in these perfumes and shrouds of Jannah. And they will raise it with the utmost gentleness. And the doors of the heavens will be opened up and the ruh will go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will say, Uktubu kitaba abdi fil illiyin. That write the name of my servant in the register of the highest registers, in the register of the righteous people. And then Allah will tell the soul, go back and rest for a time on this earth. Minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. That the ruh will then go back down and rest in this earth, except for the ruh of the shaheed who will remain flying in Jannah as a reward for the shaheed. But for the rest of humanity, their ruh will come back down and they will rest in this earth. And in this resting, as soon as they return to this earth, that is when the two angels of Munkar and Nakir will come. And these two angels of Munkar and Nakir will ask every single human three simple questions. Who is your Lord and what is your religion? And what did you say about this man? Meaning the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who did you worship? Who was your Lord? What was your lifestyle? How did you live your life? And what was your attitude towards the sunnah of our Prophet ﷺ? Did you take it or did you reject it? These three questions, my dear brothers and sisters, cannot be answered academically. If you know the answer, but you didn't act upon it, you will not be able to answer. This is not mere theory. This is reality. Ma dinuk, how did you live your life? Not what you said was your religion. What was your actual philosophy of living? Ma dinuk? What did you do with your life? Did you really live according with Islam or not? That is a question. Mere theory cannot respond. It is actual practice. And Allah says in the Quran, The response to this question will only be by Allah affirming the believer to respond. Allah. Allah's thabat is needed or else you cannot answer. In this world and in the the next world, Allah will give you that thabat. Otherwise, you will not have that thabat. The converse or the opposite, the case of the one who's evil, the case of the kafir and the fajr, our Prophet ﷺ also gave us his story and what will happen to him. Our Prophet ﷺ said, as for the one who was evil, who was fajr, who lived an impious life, the angels of punishment will come along with the angel of death. Not the angels of mercy, the angels of punishment. And as far as he can see while he's still alive, he's still, this is the last millisecond. And that is why if you've ever witnessed somebody die, you see them pause for a second. You see them completely as if they're transfixed and then their ruh goes. That millisecond, for them it is like an eternity. For them this is a different world. They're seeing the angels and they're seeing the angels of punishment. And right then and there, Allah says in the Quran, Those whom the angels took and they were wronging themselves. As soon as they see the angels, they will give an excuse. We didn't do any wrong. No, no, it's, it's not our fault. And Allah says, Inna Allah, kuntum Allah knows what you used to do. They will try to give other excuses. They would say, we were persecuted in this world. We didn't have the luxury. We didn't have the freedom to worship Allah. And Allah will say in the Quran, Alam takun fiha. If you said you were persecuted in one land and you couldn't worship Allah, couldn't you have gone somewhere else to worship Allah? Did you have to live in the land you're living in? And this is meaning that there is no excuse for not worshiping. Allah. Nobody can control your heart. Nobody can control what is happening in your house. And if you cannot worship Allah at one location, you need to go to another location. The point being, this person will try to give an excuse. It will fall on deaf ears. And this person, the Prophet ﷺ said, his ruh will be extracted. Listen to how the example he gave. Like wet cotton is pulled through an iron comb. 
wet cotton, imagine wet cotton being pulled through an iron comb. His ruh doesn't want to leave. His ruh is battling to leave. And so his ruh will try to remain, but he cannot be stronger than the angels. And so it will be a punishment in and of itself. And right then and there, the angels of punishment will begin their torture on this person. And they will mention him with the worst names. And they will come with them with the fumes and the punishment of the fire of hell. And they will handle him in a rough manner until when he is raised to the heavens, the doors of the heavens are shut for him. That Allah says in the Quran, the doors of the sama will be shut for them. That they will never enter Jannah as long as the camel cannot go through the eye of a needle, meaning they can never enter Jannah. And this person will then be told, that write the name of my book in the sigil, in the uh, in the sigil, in that which is the, the register of the evil people, and this person will then go back down to this world, and in this world will begin the punishment of the grave, the adab of the qabr. And our Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna adab al qabri haq," that the punishment of the grave is true. And our Prophet ﷺ said that. I swear by the one in whose hands is my soul. Innakum latuftanuna fi quburikum. You will be, meaning you, meaning some of you. You will be punished and tested in the grave. And I can hear the sounds of those punishments. And listen to this now. This hadith is Imam Ahmad's Musnad. If I had wanted to, I would have prayed to Allah so that you could hear the punishment of the grave. But if I were to do so, you would stop burying your dead. You would stop burying your dead. If you could hear that punishment, you would be too scared to put your loved one inside that hole. And another hadith in Ibn Majah, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا رَأَيْتُ مَنْظَرًا قَطْ إِلَّا وَالْقَبْرَ أَفْجَعُ مِنْ That I haven't seen anything in my life. And the Prophet ﷺ has seen many things. He has gone up to the heavens. He has witnessed the, the, the punishments of hell. He has seen many things. And in this hadith, he said, I have not seen anything except that what I have seen of the grave is more terrifying than all that I have seen.